Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera. Today we will continue our lecture for EBT449 Environmental Friendly Polymer. For this week, okay, I will cover the, the title of Biodegradability of Polymers. Okay, first, what is the meaning of biodegradability or the definition of biodegradability? Biodegradability of polymers is an important factor is that the term biodegradation have not been applied consistently. Okay, by means that there are many terms or definition of biodegradability. Okay, according to the medical fields of such as bone re reconstruction and drug delivery, the term biodegradation has been used to indicate hydrolysis. Meanwhile, for environmentally degradable plastic, the term biodegradation may mean fragmentation, loss of mechanical properties, or sometimes degradation through the action of living organisms. Deterioration or loss in physical integrity is also often mistaken for biodegradation. Okay. Nevertheless, it is essential to have a universal acceptable definition of biodegradability to avoid confusion as to where biodegradable polymers can be used in agriculture or fit into overall plan of polymer waste management. So, this is the general meanings or definition of biodegradability which have been agreed okay, concerning the definition of biodegradability. First, for all practical purpose of applying a definition, the material manufactured to the biodegradable must relate to a specific disposable waste pathway such as composting, sewage treatment, denitrification or anaerobic sludge treatment. Second, the rate of degradation of a material manufactured to be biodegradable has to be consistent with the disposable method and other component of the pathway into which it is introduced, such the accumulation is controlled. Okay. Third, material must biodegrade safely and not negative, negatively impact on the disposable process or the use of the end product of the disposable. The ultimate end products of aerobic biodegradation of a material manufacturer to be biodegradable are carbon dioxide, water and minerals and the intermediate product must include biomass and humic materials. Therefore, the definition of biodegradability okay, in a general terms okay, must include the disposable pathway, the rate of degradation okay, and it must be biodegradable safely. Meanwhile, the end product of anaerobic biodegradation must include the carbon dioxide, water and minerals and the byproduct must have the biomass and humic material. So, as a result, specific period of time specific disposable way and standard test methodologies were incorporated into the definition. Standard, standardization organizations such as European Committee for Standardization, CEN, International Standards Organization, ISO and American Society for Testing and Material, ASTM were consequently encouraged to rapidly develop standard biodegradation tests so this could be determined. Biodegradation of polymeric material is looked upon from the chemical pers perspective. The chemistry of the key degradation polymers or the key degradation process is represented by equation 1 and equation 2, where polymers represent either a polymer or a fragment from any of the degradation process defined earlier. Okay, for biodegradation which involve aerobic, okay, the Aerobic means that by the presence of CO2, CO2 or oxygen. Okay, so polymers, okay, with the presence of oxygen, okay, will end up with a carbon dioxide and water plus with the residue and the biomass. Meanwhile, for the anaerobic biodegradation, without the presence of oxygen, the copolymer will degrade into carbon dioxide, okay, and the ethylene, water, residue and the biomass. 
complete biodegradation occur when no residual remains. Okay, so if there is no residual remains, then we can conclude that is a complete biodegradation. Complete mineral mineralization is established when the original substrate is completely converted into gases product and salts. There are two definitions that you need to know. First is a complete biodegradation where there is no residual and another one is that when the polymer is turned or converted into gases product or salt, this is what we call as complete mineral mineralization. However, mineralization is a very slow process under natural condition because some of the polymers undergoing biodegradation will initially be turned into biomass. Therefore, complete biodegradation and not mineralization is the measurable goal when assessing removal of the environment. So our target or goal is to have a complete biodegradation, not a complete mineral mineralization where complete biodegradation there is no residual remaining this is the main objective or the main goal okay of having a biopolymers where we can avoid the environmental issues such as the landfills for the mechanism of polymer degradation there are two types first is a non bio biological degradation of polymers and another one is a biological degradation of polymers so first, let's have a look for non-biological -bio degradation of polymers. A great number of polymers are subjected to hydrolysis, such as polyester, polyanhydride, polyamides, polycarbonates, polyurethanes, polyurea, polyacetals, and polyautoesters. Different mechanisms of hydrolysis have been extensively reviewed, not only for backbone hydrolysis, but also for hydrolysis of pendant groups. The necessary elements for each range of catalysts such as acid and base cations, nucleophile and micellus, and phase transfer agents are usually present in the most environments. By means that, okay, to repeat the process of biodegradation, okay, the catalysts are required. The catalysts can be acid and base cation and nucleophiles. In contrast to enzymatic degradation where a material is degraded gradually from the surface inwards, chemical hydrolysis of a solid material can take place throughout its cross-sectional area except for a very hydrophobic polymers. Okay, this is what is mean by okay when enzymatic degradation, okay, the degradation occurs, okay, the degradation occurs from the surface okay let's say this is your okay let's say this is your material for enzymatic the attack or the degradation occur from the surface meanwhile for non enzymatic degradation which is non biological degradation it occurs throughout the cross-sectional area except for the material which is very hydrophobic materials. Important features affecting chemical polymers degradation and erosion includes the type of chemical bonds, the pH, the temperature, the copolymer composition and water uptake or the hydrophilicity. Okay, this is the factors which contribute to the degradation rate of the non-biological degradation. The type of chemical bond present inside the polymers, the pH, the temperature, the copolymer composition and the water uptake. For the biological degradation of polymers, polymer represent major constituent of the living cell which are most important for the metabolism, the genetic information, and the structure. Okay, this is the biological degradation. Why biological degradation of polymer is important? Because the microorganism require the degradation of a polymer for the metabolism, for the genetic information, and the structure. There are many different degradation mechanisms that combine synerg synergistically in nature to degrade polymers. 
microbiological degradation can take place through the action of enzyme or byproducts which such as acid and peroxide secrete by the microorganisms such as bacteria, yeast, fungi and etc. Microorganisms can eat and sometimes digest polymers and cause mechanical, chemical or enzymic aging. Okay, for the microbiological and degradation, okay, first the action of can be can be related to the enzyme, okay, that are produced by the microorganism or the pro byproduct, okay, of the microorganisms such as the acid and the protocyte, which is secreted by the microorganism. Microorganism is the big animals such as cow, okay, goat, or the fish inside the sea. Okay, which can eat and sometimes digest the polymer and cause mechanical and chemical or enzymic aging. There are two key steps occur in the microbial polymer degradation process. First is the depolymerization of change cleavage step and second is the mineralization. Okay, first the, the depolymerization of chain cleavage steps normally occur outside the organism due to the size of the polymer change and the insoluble nature of many of the polymers. Extracellular enzymes are responsible for this step either by endo, random cleavage on the internal linkage of the polymer change or exo, the sequential cleavage on the terminal monomer units in the main change. Second is the mineralization. One sufficient small size oligomeric or monomeric fragments are formed, they are transported in the into the cell where they are mineralized. Okay, do you remember previously we, we have spoken about the mineralization? Okay, so mineralization is when it changed or converted into gases or salt. At this stage, the cell usually derives metabolic energy from the mineralization process. The product of this process, apart from and the sonic triphosphate ATP are gases such as CO2, CHN, N2, NH2, water, salt, and minerals and biomass. Many variations of this general view of the biodegradation process can occur depending on the polymer, the microorganism, and the environment. Okay, for biological degradation, okay, it depends on the polymer, the organism itself and the environment, okay? Enzymes are the biological catalysts which can induce enormous in increase in reaction rates in the environment, otherwise unfavorable for chemical reaction. Each enzyme can only degrade certain polymers. Therefore, we need a certain enzyme to degrade a certain polymers, okay? And then certain enzyme or organism only can be found at certain environments. That's why okay, the polymer relate to the organism and the organism relate to the environment. Factors affecting biodegradability. The key, the key aspect determine biodegradability are related to the chemical composition of the polymers. The polymer chemistry governs the chemical and physical properties of the materials and its interaction with the biological environment, which in turn affect the material compatibility with particular degradation mechanism. Many attempts have been made to colorate polymer structure to biodegradability. The accessibility of the polymer to waterborne enzyme system is vitally important because the first step in the biodegradation of plastic usually involves the action of extracellular enzyme which will break down the polymer into product small enough to be assimilated. Therefore, the physical attack of the plastic and the surface offer for attack are important factors. Biodegradability is usually also affected by the hydrophilic nature, which is the wettability and the crystallinity of the polymers. A semi-crystalline nature tends to limit the accessibility, effectively confining the degradation to the amorphous region of the polymers. However, contradictory results have been reported. For example, high crystalline starch materials and bacteria polyester are rapidly hydro hydrocyzed. 
The chemical properties that are important include the chemical linkage in the polymer backbone, the pendant groups, their position and their chemical activity, and groups and their chemical activities. Okay, this will relate to the active site of the polymer which are prone to attack or to be degradable. Linkage involving heteroatoms such as ester and amide or peptide bonds are considered susceptible to enzymic degradation. However, it is not the case for polyamides, aromatic polyester and many other polymers containing heteroatoms in the main chain. The, the situation chemistry of the monomer units in the polymer chain also influence biodegradation rates since an inherent property of many enzymes in their stereochemical selectivity. The molecular weight distribution of the polymer can have a dramatic effect on the rate of the depolymerization. The molecular origin for this effect is still subject to speculation and has been attributed to a range of causes such as changes in enzyme accessibility, change flexibility, fees and with active sites, okay, crystallinity or other aspects of morphology. Interaction with other polymers, okay, this is include the plan, also affect the biodegradation properties. These additional materials may act as barrier to prevent migration of microorganism, enzyme, moisture or oxygen into the polymer domain of interest. This is the biodegradation behavior of polymers in liquid environments. According to many definitions, biodegradation of plastic is usually primarily induced by the action of various microorganisms, although often non-biotic effects such as irradiation, thermal degradation or chemical hydrolysis contribute to the degradation process. The activity of microorganism is closely connected to the presence of water. Why the presence of water is very important? This is because the presence of water is, is important to supply the nutrients to the microorganism and the transportation of extract enzymes and metabolic products take place by this fusion in an aqueous environment surrounding the cells. Biodegradation of plastic in a liquid environment usually means the natural degradation in sweet water, which is lake and river, in a marine environment, or in an aerobic and anaerobic sludge water waste treatment. However, many degradation studies which plas with plastic in laboratories were performed in defined synthetic or in a complex liquid nutrients growth and this also can be regarded as a degradation in a liquid environment. This is an example of degradation in a real liquid environment. Besides these aerobic environments, biodegradability of plastic has also to be considered under anaerobic conditions. This especially with the collection and biological treatment of green waste from households, anaerobic digestion, become more and more important, especially in some European countries. Therefore, the degradation of polymers also important to be studied inside an anaerobic environment, which is without the presence of O2, because certain treatment century or treatment water plant okay, have been categorized by the European countries without the presence of uh, oxygen inside the water or liquid. In addition to this waste management aspect, the introduction of biodegradable plastic to natural and anaerobic environments such as sediment in lakes, river or ocean may occur and therefore the biodegradation behavior of plastic in the absence of oxygen is of practical interest. Most of the investigation reported in the literature Concerning the biodegradation in natural liquid environment, consider the natural polyhydroxyalkanoids (PHA) such as P PHB or the co-polyester containing valerate units (PHBV). These biodegradable polymers were of outstanding interest in the past. However, nowadays the commercial relevance of this material is only limited. 
For commercially important biodegradable plastic, mainly synthetic polyester, not much data have much sorry, not much data about degradation in natural liquid environment are available. This is a study which have been done okay about PHBV. The expose of PHBV with different copolymer composition, which is the valorate composition, to the seawater, which is in 1.5 meter deep at a temperature between 14 degree until 25 degree, depending on the season. Okay, despite the variance of the temperature and the variance of the copolymer composition, there was no clear influence of the degradation rate on the hydroxyl valerate content of the copolymer detached. This means that, okay, even though the temperature is different and there are different composition of copolymer, there is no significant degradation rate difference in the polyhydroxyl valerate. Erosion rate, removal of polymer material from each surface of the filler sample were in order of magnitude of 2.5 micron per week at approximately 22 degree. A significant influence of the temperature could be found for the degradation of 3HB co 4HB. Only for 3HB co 4HB, okay, there is a significant influence of the temperature towards the degradation of this polymer. Increasing the temperature from approximately 14 degree to 24 degree nearly double the degradation rate of the polymers. Aeration rate at 24 degree approximately 3.8 micrometer per week. This is another study, okay, which have been performed by Imam and co-workers. They tested the degradation of PHVB and PHVB with starch blends in a tropical coastal water. Okay, the condition for this testing is that they put the polymer inside a basket at a 0.5 meter deep and the temperature condition is between 25 until 32 degree, degree Celsius and stated for both material at approximately 500 micron meter sheet a significant weight loss. Why? Pure PH, PHBV degraded quite slowly Okay, which is around 10 until 10 until 40 percent weight loss within the 400 days. Meanwhile, the starch blend were totally dis disintegrated within less than 150 days. This means that PHBV, which is incorporated or blended with starch, okay, have a faster rate of degradation compared to the pure PHBV. From this data, an erosion rate of about 0.4 until 1.7 micrometer per week can be estimated for PHB and more than 11 micrometer per week for PHBV. This is a study by Brander and Punchner. The degradation of PHBV, which is the biopole in a sweet water at a deep of 220 and 85 meter were investigated at a temperature ranging from 6 to 8 degrees Celsius. Despite the low temperature and the reduced oxygen concentration in the deeper water layer, 17 micrometer filler of PHBV were totally disintegrated within 254 days. This is for the synthetic polyester. Rukoska and co-workers reported a complete defragmentation of PCL sample in seawater at temperature between the 9 degrees until 21 degrees within 8 weeks. Temperature was stated to be a major influence factor for the discretion. For the synthetic polyester, temperature can be considered as a major influence for the degradation of this material. For PCL, chemical hydrolysis and enzymic surface erosion are responsible in parallel for the polymer degradation. The same research group found for polyester urethanes a significant weight loss in seawater within 12 months. Mana and Paul study okay, a direct comparison of degradation rates in different liquid and non-liquid environment at different temperature using PHBV as a degradable polyester.
they found that it is quite surprising that no significant general difference in the duration rate between the liquid environments. The liquid environment include the fresh water, sewage sludge, and the solid environment, compost and soil, at the same temperature could be observed. So they study that either in liquid or in a solid environment, PHB degradation are similar, are similar. There's no significant difference. Okay, so we can see that this is the type, this is fresh water, sewage water are considered as a liquid. Okay, this is the solid degradation environment. Okay, this is the temperature 20 degree, 40 degree, and 40 degree. Okay, for the solid, okay, we can see that uh, there is no significant changes between the materials at 20, 30, or 40. There's no significant changes, even though between the liquid or solid state. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you very much.